everybody, how's it going? Dan Schinder here on Drum Talk TV with the last interview of 2022. And I'm so honored to have back this guy, Simon Collins, the only person who with me has scaled the Sabian cymbal wall at the 2014 NAMM show. And I still have the cymbal I grabbed from the top. It was that ozone. Do you still have that hammered ride? I do. I do. Awesome. I do. I, I, I pride myself on, on quite the uh, symbol collection. Actually. I don't know if I should have said all that publicly, but Simon, welcome. <laughs> a lot of splashes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. You know, it's good to see you again. It's been Thanks. a while. Yeah, thank you. It's great to have you back. Loving the album. The new album, folks, is called The Architect from E Molecule, which is basically made up of Simon Collins and his partner in, and it is a crime. I'll tell you why it's a crime in a moment. His partner in crime, Kelly Nordstrom, uh, give our best to Kelly. And I say it's a crime because over the decades, there's been so much music come out of so many artists. And a lot of times what happens is you've got this music that comes out and then some newer contemporaries that has sometimes a lot of traces of that music before it. And then that happens again, happens again. The biggest pivot was probably when people like Mitch Mitchell, Bill Ward, these big jazz players got into bands that were completely the opposite of where they came from, Jimi Hendrix, Black Sabbath. Since then, there's, it, there's only been some small milestones of new stuff. This is why your album with Kelly as a crime, the architect, because it truly sounds fresh. And I'd love to hear your take on how it's different from what you guys did with Sound of Contact. But my take is that there's a lot of music from just hearing these first two singles, which are in the post, folks. Don't click on them now. Wait till after the interview and you can pre-order the album with the other link. But there's a lot of stuff that's like hauntingly romantic. There's a lot of mysterious vibe to the music and it's not all just bam, bam, bam. there's some really neat floaty stuff you guys did such a good job and it has just such a a, a 2020 something sound you know which which is fresh and that, that's why i say it's a crime because that doesn't happen a lot where we hear something that sounds totally new and to me this does um wow. talk a little bit about the writing process with kelly and how you guys decided on you know, because the writing's one thing, right? The math is one thing, whether it's the drumming, the beats, the rhythms, the scales, the melodies, but the production part of it is really what makes it sound how it sounds. How did you architect that? No pun intended. I'm going to wow. show the cover while you start talking about it. Well, uh, Kelly and I, we threw the formula book right out. You know, first, first things first. Um, we had a lot of material collectively. Um, he had a mountain of material. I had a mountain of material. Kelly came out uh, to visit me in 2020 in September. And he was originally, we were going to do a co-writing thing for my next solo album. Um, that quickly turned into something completely different. Um, after some very deep discussion, we realized this was our destiny to be a, a duo in a band. And, and we, we quickly changed plans, uh, which didn't really require much as far as um, the musicality of, of the whole process. Um, yeah, we, we uh, as I said, we threw the formula book out and we, we decided to uh, just dive right into um, uh, you know, the material that I had uh, written before he, he, he come out and, uh, you know, we we basically helped each other finish each other's material. And, and so oh. there's there, there's uh, every time we stepped into the studio, we come out with something new and something fresh. The production side of things, um, I, I'd say. <clears throat> well, when, when we first started out, we were working with a, a co-producer, uh, Robbie Bronyman, and what we were doing is we decided to put a demo together uh, for Inside Out. We wanted to be with Inside Out. Um, they're, they're the best prog label in the world. I'd say the best label I've ever worked with, period. That's awesome. They've been great with us, too. Yeah, they've been wonderful. We, we didn't have any ideas about shopping it to anyone else. We wanted to do a demo 
uh, as a you know old school term demo uh, to to uh, for Thomas at, at Inside Out and Thomas Weber. And so we had um, we were working collaborate not collaborating uh, songwriting wise but uh, production wise with um, with us at uh, Robbie Bronneman and we did four together we chose the the four strongest songs out of the material we had we had about sorry pardon me <laughs> <laughs> no worries that says a, a lot about the process <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens okay great um. Yeah, so uh, we had we had combined about maybe twenty tracks, twenty songs uh, wow. to choose from, and so yeah, we uh, we got the demo done and 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 pleasantly surprised, um, you know, at the at the speed in which he got back to us. Uh, he said he really loved the material, and, and you know, we just signed a three album deal with him um, for for a molecule. The songwriting process is really simple. Um, you know, we're we're really um, you know in I, we we have this place called the zone. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know with with songwriting, uh, some people I've worked with in the past have said, "Well, um, you know," I said, "Oh, have you done any writing yet?" They're like, "Oh no, I'm not. I'm not inspired, or I haven't. You know, the inspiration hasn't come." And right. I think. I think it's the other way around. I think the zone is is everywhere around you. It's it's, it's all encompassing. It's yeah. the, the the realm of pure potentiality. Yeah, and you got to take the initiative to dive in and, and, and to, to to make that connection to yeah. make the to make that connection to pure potentiality. And, and we were in the zone. Uh, we we wrote the entire album in a month. Wow, uh, twenty songs. It was a double album. It started off being a double album, and we've, we've chiseled it down to to fit onto one CD. Um, but it's also a concept album, so we started writing uh, the concept first, and uh, draft three made it in. Um, wow! Stories that we wanted to tell, um, and uh, and then of course while we were writing, we were working on the running order because I mean that's with a concept album yeah the, telling a story the, the running order is is paramount um because you're not just thinking about okay these songs back to back can't be in the same key they can't be in the same tempo they can't be the same subject matter you've also got on top of it it's got to be chronologically in the storyline correct yeah. mm -hmm. so, so that was a that was a big uh amount of that that was a huge amount of effort that went into that side of things the music really just flowed man it really did um but uh yeah songwriting wise that's kind of how we approached it that's awesome and and the production how did you arrive at you know the way it's going to sound because like i said it does not just the music but the production as well it just sounds so fresh and modern after we got the deal we uh kelly and i decided to uh produce co-produce the rest of the album together Mm -hmm. and, um uh you know kelly's got his own influences from black sabbath you know he he's he's amazing with his guitar sound design amazing um uh you know and you know he's 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 got a lot of different influences jazz um fusion and stuff like that i'm i'm more the, the uh the synthetic uh producer I used to DJ and mm -hmm. I used to DJ psychedelic trance and drum and bass and stuff like that. So, 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 so I was more on top of the sound design and, um, wanted to go for a f ultra modern, uh, electronic, uh, production, um, mixed with the progressive metal from Kelly. Yeah. That's how the, the, the fusion you know uh came together so it's it's you know well you, the the genre progressive rock there's the word progressive is in the name of the genre mm -hmm. and i like um there's no room there's no room for retro progressive rock on our on our stuff i love all. that it's all looking all, forward moving forward thinking you know yeah. so um so between the two of us 
um, yeah, we managed to uh, put together our, uh, you know, uh, I think one of the best things we've ever done individually and collectively. Because we've worked together for 20 years, me and Kelly. Yeah. And he's uh, he's played guitar on four of my five, sorry, three of my four solo albums. And then, of course, we did Dimension on together as yeah. well. So, so we've done a lot of work together. But it wasn't until that trip that we realized that we've been staring each other in the face the whole time. This is the answer. This is this is this is what we should be doing. That's and we're, great. You know, we're ready. So, you know, Sound of Contact was um, was a very complex process. You know, making the album, um, promoting the album. It was it was uh, there's just some complex characters involved. And um, so this is so much simpler for us. And, uh, you know, I feel like he's my soulmate, my, my musical soulmate. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing all of that. And being that you had enough material for two CDs and it is a concept album, I got to ask the inevitable question. Is this archi the architect? Is it a to be continued? And we'll certainly expect no. the rest of the story or a continuation of the story with the other material. Um, interesting. Um, probably not. We'll probably, you know, find a place for that other material. Definitely going to use the, the other material, uh, or most of it for our second record, which we've already, like, we've got half of it written at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we're, we're probably going to work things differently on that one. So, um, but yeah, the, the the concept is really, uh, I you know, I want to go into it with you, and we will. But um, at the same time, I do want uh, the audience to have their own, you kind of come to their own interpretation. Of let's do that first. Let let's let the album come out, let it marinate into people's brains, and then come back on and let's talk about that after, so we can get their take after hearing it. Sure. Absolutely. That'd I remember that was on the forum was progressiveears.com and uh, this one fan of Dimension Op put together a synopsis of what he thought the concept was about. Uh -huh. And it actually turned out to be cooler than our than our own uh, concept. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you got third writer. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. But, you know, that, that does happen, you know. I mean, it's not as vague as Dimension Op um as a concept this is very much a story that you follow from song to song um and it's um it's a, it's a human story it's a it's a it's a, it's a it's it's an album uh all designed and built around the concept of uh, the theme of redemption mm. it's cool. uh was one character the character is called the architect and he's, you know, he's he's kind of like um, a psychopathic globalist elite. Oh, so uh, he's a guitar player. Genesis. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, right. I'm going to show the album cover again, and I want to remind people to chime in in the comments. Tell us where you're watching from. Let us know if you have questions for Simon. Uh, yes, Christopher A. James, yes. He's asking if you're related to some guy named Phil Collins. I don't know the real answer. I just said yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm glad you got my back on that one. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Tell us about the cover. Um, who made it? Who who came up with the idea? And I'm assuming that that's probably part of the story. It is part of the story. It's uh, it's the helmet that our character, the architect, wears. Oh, whoa like a Darth Vader character. Wow, I thought it was like a spaceship. Yeah, How exactly. interesting. Um, Tavi Torm is uh, the graphic artist we worked with on this album. He did the Dimension Art artwork. He did Becoming Human as well. He's done a lot of video animation for me as well. Great. Uh, so, so, and he's, he's also, you know, he's working on some of the animation in our current videos as well that you've seen. Oh, they're great. Yeah. yeah. So he came up with 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 the helmet, 
And um, we were talking about how this character is very much uh, along the storyline of, of Darth Vader's journey, how he's a Jedi and, you know, how it's... So, so there's a little bit of a hint there. Oh, that's um, awesome. You met Stephen before we started. And yeah. uh, Steve, my other son, Alex, uh, my wife and I, our son, Kavan, uh, and maybe three other family members are huge, huge Star Wars fans. So now I can't wait to hear the whole thing together. And I got to ask after talking about the album cover and the artwork and the videos, is there any chance? Because I personally love stuff like this and no one's doing it. I would love a long form video that tells the whole story along with the music. Any chance of that? We've talked about it. Um, uh, but I think we're going to, we're going to stop at five videos. Okay. And some as long them, as one's 20 minutes, I'm cool with that. Yeah. We don't have a track on the album. We, we actually, we were close. Um, and then we decided, you know what, you know, it's the obligatory 20 minute epic at the end of the album. And then we <laughs> nice. we're like, you know what, let's do something more profound, if anything. That was the, the main point to end the album on a very profound level. Um, so, so the lyrics were played a big part in that, and just the, the mood and the emotion of the, of the of the song played a big part of that. Um, there's also a sample from a journalist, um, well, a makeup, a, ma a made up journalist, a fake journalist um, that makes a report about how the, the you know the story ends at the end of the, at the end of the album. So we we have, we played around a lot with with things like that. Great. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we've got five videos. Um, we chose to release a cross section because uh, the album is so dynamic. Uh, songwriting wise, style like style wise, we've got um, some some stuff that's more accessible. But then we've got stuff like the song A Molecule, which is like, you know, you think we were tripping on acid when we wrote it. <laughs> Wait, you weren't? Yeah, well, actually, that's one of Kelly's babies, you know. And that, that's kind of how we went through the albums. That, you know, we, each song either came from one or the other, but we always helped each other finish them. Mm -hmm. uh, Molecule, that, that's definitely um, uh, Kelly got written, written all over it. Um, so... So yeah, so uh, there's an opportunity to tell a lot of the story through the videos that we have done so far. We've we filmed all five already. We're just we're editing oh. the now. So we're we're releasing a video once a month. So we've released two so far. Uh, the next one will be on the 12th of January. Oh, that's great. So the first single uh, is E Molecule. Oh. And the second single is Beyond Belief. Both those video links are in the post. Check those out. And when does the album actually come out? The pre-order is in the post as well. But when does it get released in the U.S.? That'll be February 10th. Oh, nice. Okay, great. And are you guys going on tour? Well, um, we'd love to. We'd love to. I think we, it, we we're waiting, waiting for the right opportunity, the right moment um i think you know some some point near the end of next year would probably be the soonest that would okay. happen but we've already got a band put together i was going to ask that next yeah tell us about that an amazing drummer his name's isa contractor and he's a good friend of kelly's uh lives up in canada he actually uh how he got the gig was uh he rented out a studio in vancouver set up his kit uh put it set up his camera and he he played along to a molecule the track a molecule oh and it blew our minds man he, wow. he's a performer to the nth degree um he's got chops and he's got you know he's got technique he's got he's delicate with the metal but he can be you know heavy as heavy as hard rock um just and, and also just a really nice guy really that's really awesome nice guy that's uh, so will you that, just be singing lead and playing keyboards or just uh, singing I'll, I'll probably be playing some keyboards uh cool. I, I might i've been uh the last couple of records i've used the v drum kit 
uh, which allows me to fit the drum sound to the song yeah. and so what the song needs uh, as opposed to miking up my my acoustic kit and having the same drum sound throughout the entire album yeah I did to, to go with you know an abundance of sound libraries um, so that's why every every song on the album has a different drum sound yeah uh, I think those are some uh, of the differences uh, between you know for people who have followed uh, like Dimensionaut and other sound of contact material I think you've already outlined what a lot of the differences are between this project and previous stuff that you've done and have even done with Kelly, how different this is, which is great. Cause again, um, that's all part of what makes this so fresh, you know, but the modern, the production's great. It's just, I, that's like one of the first things I listen to before I try memorizing lyrics or anything, I put on something. I want to know, like I'm listening to the production. Okay. The drum sound, the, the, the different guitars, what bass is that? I want, you know, I really dig into that stuff. I love that. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of drum drum design as well on this as well drum programming mm -hmm. as well live drums or live sounding drums that's um, great yeah so so yeah so you know we're we're hoping to go on tour for sure um we'll see how that goes but we've definitely got a solid band that's that would that that would um lead the way for sure that's awesome what yeah. music have you been listening to that maybe people would expect if they know what you're into? And what music have you been listening to that they might not expect? Because, you know, you get stereotyped, or they must listen to this because they played this. But that's right. not always the case. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, um, I was, I'm in a, another project called, um, well, I'm not actually, I'm not going to release the name of the project yet. Okay. But we'll call it uh, Farfig Nugan for now. Far from Nugan. It's, uh, it's a progressive hip hop project. Oh. So that's a surprise right there. Yeah. I mean, hip hop, but I used to love hip hop. I mean, I used to listen to hip hop when I was a teenager. And yeah. You'll listen to, to, to a lot of underground hip hop, if anything. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I've been listening to uh, some Chris Weber. He's, a, he's an underground hip hop artist. Oh, yeah been listening to a, a lot of that kind of music mm -hmm. uh, as well as as producing it in this other project that i'm working on That's which great. is an album as well <laughs> so i've been busy in the studio um i also like uh i've also i i always go back to my old faithful um bands like juno reactor and left field those are electronic bands yeah uh, of it dub, some of it uh, psychedelic drum and bass stuff like that. So I don't I don't tend to uh, to listen to stuff on the surface. I I dig I dig for the music I listen to. That's uh, great. A lot of it's not um, well known. A lot of it, but it's it's so good, and that's you know we, I I I need music with substance and meaning. Yeah, and I'll go to to whatever um to whatever lengths i have to, to to find that music you know there are a couple of songs that have really hit me that hit the top 20 top 10 like that song human from rag and bone man yeah 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 that oh, song wow. after that so um yeah there's a lot of urban music going on in my life at the moment um but you know progressively david maxim mm-hmm with that that ep ego yeah I mean, that's amazing that's stuff, cool right? yeah so i mean like there is i do listen to progressive rock i just i'm very picky very that's picky about it. me yeah. too i'm also i must admit i'm also very um stuck in a certain lane like there's very few new things i listen to because I'm picky like you, but then there's also old stuff that I've been listening to and playing for over 50 years, whether the song's 50 years old or that that's that insane. band has been around through generations and, you know, it's like five or seven things I've just been doing forever. Um, I don't 
listen to music on the radio, and I mostly get turned on to new music through people like you and Inside Out and my son, Steve, uh, who turned me on to a year ago, a band called Chromatics, who are no longer together, but they put out some really neat electronica based stuff with a female yeah. vocalist. I don't know if you're familiar with them, really beautiful stuff. So if I, I do, what's that? Should be familiar with them. Yeah, check, check it out, check it out. Um, when I do listen to new music, I do want it to be completely different from those other seven bands, you know, Led Zeppelin, yeah. Deep Purple, Yes, Rush, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Jethro Tull and Genesis, who you probably never heard of, but they're all good bands. <laughs> I've heard of Genesis. Have you? Uh, yeah. They're, Do you they're, like they're, them at all? Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, Genesis is one of, I think, one of the best bands ever. Oh, absolutely. I agree. And no I matter what the playing. iteration is uh, either, you know. Uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the whole idea of a band evolving. Yeah. Uh, as it should, I think artists should evolve. Uh, bands should evolve, um, not for the sake of the doll, the almighty Yankee dollar, right? Uh, but some bands, just artistically, artistically. But, when you look at Return uh, of the uh, Giant uh, Hog, Metallica through that documentary, uh, you know, where they're you know they're trying to get sober and the whole thing, and I, you know, I respect them for 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 letting their audience into their world that yeah. way, but. It was so obvious that, that the pressure from the label for them to find a way to, to continue selling records to their fan base. Yeah. Move into the 90s and stuff like that. It should be uh, an intuitive process. It should be organic. Absolutely. Orga organic and authentic. Authentic and, and genuine. Yeah. And I think there's an audience for everything. So I think you could evolve from Return of the Giant Hogweed to mama and there's always going to be an audience for it right it doesn't it i don't think we need to create to suffice a given audience because if your music changes and it's not a fit for some of the audience that's okay because it's going to be a fit for people who you might not have been a fit for three albums ago or something it, there, ends up, it yeah. does yeah usually usually you two are a good example of a band that has just managed to 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 continue to evolve. Yeah, big time. Um, to taking risks, I think is important. And that's another thing that Kelly and I did on this album was we took creative risks. You know, um, and also the um, the unpredictability factor I think is something that we really enjoy as well. Is just is just doing things that you just wouldn't expect. That, that right there, everything you just said is right from the school of David Bowie. Not only was every album different, his whole persona was different. Album, to, he just would do something and leave it and completely move on. Yeah, just genius. Sure that. That's why when you asked about like Architect 2 or whatever, it's like, no, we're going to press the cosmic reset button. Yeah. Down too, and do something completely different. You know, we haven't got that far yet, but um, yeah. Yeah absolutely it's uh, it's all about you know when it's something genuine and authentic and it's in the moment you know that moment you capture that moment and then you move on you know yeah uh it's it, but it's it's nice to plant certain things in in the lyrics or what have you that might have a uh connection to like for instance there's a track on the album called prison planet and that's actually uh um uh uh, a reference to uh, Dimension Aunt. Prison Planet is in the lyrics for Pale Blue Dot. You know, it just, that's yeah. the name of the planet he lives on. So so you could say that this is Dimension Aunt's planet. You could connect the two and say there's a connection there. But is there really? Well, you know, we didn't really plan it that way. But that's the other thing. Not, not so cerebral, uh, yeah. the approach. You know, although it is a cerebral sounding album, we're we're not there like you know where there are you know our, our charts and our you know our formula yeah. book and all that kind of stuff and mm -hmm and hawing you know a lot of stuff just came out how it was supposed to come out mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some you know we had some emotional moments too you know I got him and he got me 
you know. Really? Got, got the teary eye going on. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> but this is, it's an emotional ride. And, uh, of course, yeah. we... And the music is your babies, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, I think what another element that allowed us to write this album is is that we put a lot, so much of ourselves and what we've experienced in our own lives into this character's journey. So, so it's not just coming from some, some, you know, other kind of, it's not coming from some other uh, source. Yeah. No it, outside influence. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, very closely based on our own life experiences that's great it makes it even more personal um you mentioned that you now live in ireland um, that's right you were in vancouver where you grew up one how has there been an adjustment factor to the culture and two i've always wondered this how does one pack up all their shit and move to a different continent or do you sell almost everything and <laughs> and start over like how does that i've always wondered that especially with musicians and all their gear because i'm one of those idiots that i've never ever in 53 years ever gotten rid of any gear i just don't i don't sell it i don't well, so how, say, how was your process simon I'm guilty of that i've got a, a big storage for, uh, facility in uh in, in vancouver canada where i've got you know the eight drum kits and <laughs> yeah. you know boards and all a shitload of outboard gear that i'll never use again but i can't get rid of get rid it i'm the same way yeah i just don't want to get rid of it but I, I i was in canada for 30 years and i decided um after uh, uh, uh well divorces are always nasty after a nasty divorce as expected um you know the geographical escape came into the picture i was like you know what i'm mm. I'm not just leaving you. I'm I'm leaving this country. <laughs> this Jumping down a black hole. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going down the rabbit hole. Uh, I went. I moved to the UK and I lived there for well, from 2012 to 2016. So yeah, a few years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then eventually, uh, I my mom got got ill, and um, you know she needed my support. And I actually needed her support and likewise reciprocated. Mm -hmm. um, so we decided to pack up and, and move to Ireland. We wanted to get away from the rat race. England is so popular, overpopulated. It really is. Really? And my mom's got electrosensitivity, uh, which is basically she can't be around smart meters or 5G or Wi Fi or any oh, of that stuff. Yeah. And our village that we moved into, uh, or that we were that last place we lived in England. Uh, everyone got smart meters and my mom was getting like migraines and heart palpitations and the whole thing. Uh, long story short, we moved to uh, to rural Ireland and just press the reset button. Mm -hmm. It's that easy, man. You know, I'm actually later in my later years, I've become much less materialistic in, in, in the sense that I, I don't need much. Other than drum gear. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I, I'm talking to you from my studio. I've yeah. got uh, quite a few. I got you know, my my uh, System Eight Roland here, and uh, I've got you know Nordlead uh, synth uh, stage actually a Nordlead stage and uh, some other like uh, analog synths, mm -hmm. and I've got my V drum kit behind me here on the yeah. right. I got my MIDI here in front of me, and some some. Great A monitors and uh, you know my audio interface and my screen. I'm 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 happy. I've got a live room next door for my kit, which I I don't play as much as I should. I'll admit. Um, but you got the Marshall stack in there and everything, everything for 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 live stuff. Uh, so I have a good setup here, uh, and I'm you know my, all my my neighbors are spud farmers, and yeah. they're cool. Cool. Yeah, they're, they're good people you know that they, they, they came you know my neighbor came by over christmas last year and brought us a bottle of wine and some roses oh uh, nice my cheek i thought that was a bit cheeky <laughs> it's so but, cool that you're there for her too that's that's so yeah, important you know we don't get that time back i know and she's she's better now though 
Good. She come around. Uh, and, you know, I'm also better too, because I was struggling with addiction um, yeah. for, for many years. Do you mind um, talking about that a bit? How, how you got to the other side? I'm sure it would be helpful to a lot of people. I think acceptance, um, learning to love yourself. And, and, and I, when I say that, I don't mean in a selfish way, um, taking care of yourself. Um, I think gratitude is a big, is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, being grateful for what you have and um, and surrounding yourself with the right people you know people that do care about your about yeah. you and um, you know love is, is really the answer and I know that sounds corny and I know the Beatles said that years ago but it's um, true it is it's true learning to love yourself it's it's an existential vacuum. So, you know, it's also, I've just, I pushed myself to the point where, you know, you know, it's, uh, my doctor said, you know, you've only got this amount of time to live <laughs> left if, uh, if you carry on the way you're carrying on, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So like, you know, moving out here, you know, uh, was a, was a, 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 a tough, a tough, kind of first couple of years, didn't know anybody. Uh, it's, it's quite quite an isolating kind of part of the country. And um, and I just, I guess I didn't deal with that as well as I could have, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in a good place now. I'm in a really good place now. And uh, I think, great. you know, in life, like, you know, change isn't something people do when they have some spare time. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and who has that? Know what I mean? Like, well, I got a, I got a, a few days off. Maybe I'll, you know, I'll, I'll um, shift, you know, ch change it all up. You know, it's, um, it's usually done. Changes comes out of uh, something that you're forced to do. Um, you know, out of, out of potentially traumatic situations, and you're forced to change, or things are over. You know. Yeah. If, if, you know, you can think of that metaphorically in any different way you want. But, um, you know, yeah, anyway, long story short, I'm doing great. That's yeah. awesome. Breakthroughs don't happen in our comfort zone, no matter Thank how you. well we're doing either, right? That's another way of saying it. Yeah. yeah. Do you mind if I ask if, um, did you replace the whatever you were addicted to, did you replace it with something like, did you take up a different snack or beverage or exercise or reading or collecting something or, or did you just shh, do a reset and now you don't do that anymore? Um, I, uh, I, well, I've got diabetes, so. Me too. I found out three years ago. Oh, sorry to hear that, man. Yeah. It's a, it's a beat, isn't it? It's a, yeah. It's a I had to really make some changes and I didn't grow up on candy. I, yeah, I've never been yeah. overweight. My doctor so, thinks I gave it to myself being addicted to fruit and juice. That can do it. I mean, you know, um, yeah, I, I was, I'm, I'm a sh sugar fiend, you know, big mm. time. Very difficult for me. And that's probably the last thing that I'm struggling with at the moment is, 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 a, is a fully healthy diet. But my mom, yeah. my mom tends to make the dinners uh, around here. And uh, like I've got my own place and she's got her own place it's just on the same property so oh that's come. great but um yeah i uh for the most part i sunk myself into my work you know that's why i've written that's a good replacement albums. i've written two double albums in 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 a, in, in a couple of years um basically just um yeah because it's just such a it's such an amazing place to 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 be to exist uh, in the zone, it's such a great place to be, and um, it, it definitely saved me um, on many occasions in my life. You know, music, therapeutic, that's obvious. Um, but it, it, it's it, it honestly, sincerely saved my life. Um, this out making this album. That's great. Is a big part of it, I think purpose is important for anyone. Meaning. You know, wanting to belong, a lot of those things. But yeah, now I just drink Coca Cola. There you go. 
<laughs> so let's close out with this because we weren't able to do this when we first met and did the interview because it was at the NAM show, which is a different dynamic. But when I have someone on for the first time like this, I, I'd love to do what we will call the Simon Collins fun fact segment. So rapid fire questions. Ready? Oh, God. <laughs> What's the one place in the world you've never been to that's at the top of your list? Other than my house. Uh, Tibet. Oh, Tibet. I'll go with you. I'd studied some Tibetan Buddhism for a couple of years. But nonetheless, I'd love to go to Lhasa. I'd love to go to you know Nepal, the, you know, the Himalayan countries. Yeah. Oh, that's great. How about other than your band, who would you love to jam with that you've never played with before? Porcupine Tree. There you go. I'll talk to Gavin. Do you know Gavin? I don't know him personally, no. Oh, no. I'll connect you guys. He's wonderful. I absolutely love his drumming. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Now, you mentioned you're diabetic, as am I. What is your favorite meal to eat? Is it haggis now? <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I can't get enough of the chicken schnitzel. I really, I'm, I'm a big fan of the chicken schnitzel. Um Brussels sprouts. That that's all. That's all I eat all uh, every night. No, I'm, I'm I'm joking. No, I think <laughs> um, my you know, uh, I I every once in a while I'll sneak in a rice pudding. Oh, I won't tell anyone. Yeah, that's especially okay. your doctor. There you go. At the back of the fridge. You <laughs> yeah, know. where you pretend to hide it from yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's one album? that you can listen to forever and it be your go-to album that you'd never get tired of. Some people call it the Stranded on an Island album, but your your album that you'd never get tired of listening to. What's what's one of the top ones? Uh, so Seconds Out by Genesis. Oh, I, I'm going to yeah. have to check that out. I used to play, I used to practice because when I was, when I was, you know, when I was, well, in my early teens, Mostly, uh, I'd play about four hours a day on the drums, and it was uh, and seconds out was always a part of that workout. So I, I know how to play seconds out from beginning to end, and I just it's uh, it's it's also got sentimental value for me. Sure, as well. yeah, that would be it for sure. That's a that's a whopper of an album. It is, and it's probably especially <coughs> excuse me for its time. So that's the first Genesis album I ever heard. I heard it the year after it came out or the year it came out. And um, especially for the time, it is the cleanest, most pristine live recording ever. Just the quality of the production is amazing. And that's one of the things, again, that got me about that album. It's just fantastic. And I love that it has both parts of the tour with some Bill Bruford on it and some Chester Thompson. Yeah. And some other guy that plays drums. Who, Steve Hackett? No. Um. Play drums. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great album. So that, that's a good one. Well, great. People got to know you a bit, and we appreciate that. So let's do this. After the album comes out in February, let's let it get out there, get people listening, and then let's come on again and talk about the response, and we'll have people chime in. I'd love to, man. That'd yeah, that'd be fun. And we'll stay in touch in the meantime, of course. And folks, you got to dig in. The links are right in the post. Check out those two first singles from The Architect by E Molecule, comprised of Simon Collins and Kelly Nordstrom. Uh, you could check out E Molecule. And the second um, single is called Beyond Belief. They're both amazing. The videos are great. And Simon, hang on to the line after we disconnect from the audience. I want to thank you so much for taking time to come on. And of yeah. course, thanks to the folks over at Inside Out Music. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Cool. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon.